How is everybody keeping up with these developments in Polkadot open governance these days? Any tips, tricks, strategies? Even Bill Laboon from the Web3 Foundation is overwhelmed with everything that's happening in Polkadot open governance. And I can understand it. On-chain governance is super stressful. A lot of it is going on at the same time. It's decentralized. Uh, and so it's really a question of how can we how can we get a handle on this? And at the same time, something far bigger is going on, which is there is not only everything going on at the same time right now, but we are seeing it evolving and developing in new ways and actually becoming the thing we want it to be, which is a governance system that allows us to manage a blockchain system, communities, have treasuries, make decisions together. And so the topic for today's video is politics existed before Polkadot and the future of on-chain governance. So hi everyone, welcome to Edison Bob. We want to go into this question today. How can we make OpenGov better? How is it becoming better? And uh, it's, it's, it's a question, but it's also a discussion because there is no clear answers. We don't have a lot of precedents for this. We have some experience happening in the, in the overall crypto ecosystem, but what we also have is experience from other systems of politics. And I think everyone agrees there is a lot of bad politics. There is maybe some good politics, but what we see is that there are established, established structures of doing politics in a good way uh, and doing politics in a bad way. So sometimes it's doing good things and we should take a look at how we can make this happen. So this is the question of today. And I've started in this journey some time ago. In recent months, I've become more active with uh, acti actually coming out with posts, providing my inputs. I have a little bit of a background in politics. I've been working in politics for seven years, uh, national politics, and I've been supporting with communications and IT skills. And yeah, I've been uh, posting some stuff in the Polkadot forum from time to time, also participate in AIG. And so today I want to provide a summary of the thoughts and discussions that I participated in in the recent months and give you, maybe help you a little bit in your understanding, maybe help you differentiate and, and provide some inputs into the discussions. Um, you're also super aware of everything that uh, is going on in that sector if you're following at Edison Bob on Twitter and on YouTube. So let's jump in. And today we want to talk about the following things, which is, first of all, before we dive too deeply into the politics, what is the basic mindset? What is the general approach we should have when uh, talking about these topics? What basic elements of governance can we see in maybe, let's say, traditional politics that might be useful for us? We are going to look a little bit of the, on the legislative side. So from discussion to decision, how can we put the ideas into decisions? We talk about budget and strategy, which are basically very complex and important topics. We go from decision to execution in the executive part, and we talk about collectives and initiatives. So the entities that actually get stuff done uh, and take care about the delivery. And we're starting the discussion with why open gov, why open governance, why on-chain governance. So the it doesn't matter really in which on-chain governance ecosystem you're interested in. This might apply to all of them, but we're going to discuss Polkadot and I think you can take something away no matter where you're from. So the why is basically answering the basic mindset with which we need to approach these topics. So we can start from a simple fact that many people agree with, uh, or let's say a statement or an assumption that many people agree with, which is Polkadot Web3 can change the world. It has the potential to provide applications that have not been here before and can make a substantial contribution to how we interact on the internet, interact in society, maybe even in general, and how we build applications that have properties like resilience, uh, censorship resistance, and so on. And Polkadot is also an organization. So Polkadot gives us the way to organize, to have modes of governance to interact and to come to decisions together. It's an ecosystem where different stakeholders and participates, participants are interacting and uh, exchanging. And so all of these stakeholders are coming together. And so the question is, we have a system that we want to govern together, different stakeholders. How do we do it? Uh, 
Um, the next important concept that we need to take in, 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 in consideration here is that Polkadot has different value propositions. Every, every crypto ecosystem has different value propositions. For example, in case of Polkadot, it's fast finality, high economic security, interoperability, and so on and so on and so on. Um, and so these value propositions have something to deliver. So it is around these value propositions that we organize and that we want to make count for the users of the system. These value propositions is what makes Polkadot strong. And so this is what governance should orient around. How can we make sure that these value, this value is delivered to the users of the system? So we can define the role of OpenGov in this context as the place where we agree on how we develop the network. It's basically building the brain for Polkadot. Polkadot is this ecosystem that does a lot of stuff at the same time. OpenGov can be the brain that coordinates the activity, looks at everything that is happening and decides how to best move forward and use the resources that we have available. And one of the most important resources is money. Um, there are also other important resources like people, but money is of very special consideration because there is a treasury which has DOT tokens and the most hotly debated discussion you see are about money. People are not hotly debating governance parameters or, or inflation parameters too, but what is, is the real heat of the discussion is how should we spend the money, how much should we spend, how should we not spend it, and so on and so on. So these are, this is one of the mediums on, around which we organize our discussion. And because Polkadot is an organization, it is like an organism, it has organs. So these are, we see a differentiation and different parts of this system developing. And so we can ask what type of organs does OpenGov have? What is the differentiation? What are maybe institutions or, or decentralized bodies that are developing? We have to assume that this introduces complexity. Every organism is complex by nature. And most importantly, it's decentralized, which introduces the complexity, which even makes a video like this necessary. Because if this were traditional politics, you wouldn't need a guy here sitting in the studio talking with you because there's already enough established knowledge. But decentralized governance is so new and so groundbreaking that we are developing this in real time as we see it right now. So let's look at the elements of governance. What are some basic conclusions that we can draw from maybe even uh, traditional governance? And when we look at this, we can ask some two basic questions, which is what should we do and how should we do it? So what and how? Um, and if you look at this, this very much correlates to what we traditionally refer to as legislative and executive branches. So let's take a look at legislative and executive branches. What we mean by this is that there is a separation of power and the question of what should we do or the legislative question um, talks about strategy, talks about budget, talks about the process of government. So if you look at a democracy, for example, they, there is always coalitions that are following a certain strategy of what they want to achieve. For example, uh, traditional politics want to do something for the economy or in, in Polkadot we have, we want to have more marketing output. Um, so there is a certain strategy on what goals are important. There is a budget, uh, what money do we throw at the thing, at the processes, how do we come to decisions? What types of discussions do we have? How does voting work? Who are the bodies that are coordinating the voting and making the decisions effectively? And we have the executive side. So once a decision is made, the question we are asking is in political dimensions again, what initiatives are important for the government? So for example, if it has a strategy of strengthening the economy, are there initiatives to strengthen workers, strengthen businesses, uh, strengthening the public sector, strengthening certain sectors and so on and so on. So these are the questions of putting in certain initiatives that put the country forward. And in on-chain governance, we can, for example, a topic that we will discuss a lot, uh, developer experience. So how can we make developer experience better? And then basically focus in on this topic. So these are certain initiatives on certain like key milestones that we want to achieve. And then you can talk about departments of government. So uh, traditionally, economy, security, 
uh, education and so on, and maybe in a, a blockchain ecosystem, you can have, some, have something like research, you can have software development, you can have infrastructure operations, you can have outreach, and so on and so on and so on. So we can see that there are already some parallels. It might be useful to use those terms, legislative and executive, and we might also discover that knowing crypto, we actually have different categories. For now, I propose that we use those categories because to me they seem meaningful. We can see that there is a separation between what happens before a decision is made and what is, happens after the decision is made. So I propose for now we use those terms and look at everything under this consideration. If you like the content so far, make sure to follow us on at Alice and Bob on Twitter and YouTube. So we're going to look at those areas and we're going to start with the legislative side and we're going to ask what should we do? So how do we make decisions? How do we do a legislative? And one thing we can agree on, I think, is that we are essentially an open assembly. So there is an assembly of people and because it's decentralized, it's an open assembly. We don't even know who is participating. Uh, are you having three identities or one identity uh, with how many tokens you're voting? And discussions are happening in different places. And so since we have this kind of new form of governance, of government, we need a process to consider all the problems we see, all the goals we see, all the possible visions that might unite us. We need to discuss ideas, formulate plans out of these ideas, and then arrive at a consensus, at an actual agreement. And ideally, we have some form of a shared strategy, because this would make it even stronger, and if we make it work against the budget, we are even working within the parameters of reality, which would make it even stronger. So let's go into, the, into this first cluster of problems, which is how do we handle vision problems and goals? So how do we even start the whole discussion? And I'm going to give you some examples. So we, let's call this the inputs of the system. There might be, I'm having a vision, maybe you have a different vision, maybe some people share a vision. So, but consider that it's possible that we arrive, or some people, a big group of people arrive at a shared vision. It could be something like, we want to build a web-free ecosystem where developers can come and find the tools to solve real-world problems. When we have such a vision, suddenly we have a starting point from which we can engage in discussions and uh, where we are able to think about uh, do we want something or do we not some want something, does something align with our vision or not, suddenly we have a lens, a vision, under which we can consider everything, which makes it far easier to come to decisions and conclusions. We can see a lot of problems and we can make lists of all the problems that we are seeing. Uh, in the past, for example, we had a bad wallet experience. This problem, I think, was solved. We have a lot of good wallets in Polkadot right now. But what we also see is there is still a bad developer experience. There is work undergoing, and I think we need to improve of this. But bad developer experience is a problem we can discuss. <clears throat> for example, we could say we improve the docs. We introduce end-to-end -to -end tooling. So once we have problems, very quickly we can arrive at potential solutions that we can develop. Um, another problem that's very often discussed is there is no universal gas token in Polkadot. Essentially, every pair chain has a different token. And liquidity is also a problem, right? And so this is just a few examples. Um, you can make lists of different length and you can also look, if you look at different ecosystems of the big ecosystems, they often share similar problems if they are in a similar stage of development. So. In addition to the vision of the problems, we can define certain goals and they might be dependent or independent of what we just saw. So, for example, one goal can be if it's reactive to a problem, we can say we want to improve the developer experience. If it is proactive, we maybe want to say we want to create web-free tooling that allows us to uh, put uh, put a web-free app into the hand of everyone or, or, or develop a framework that makes it very easy to develop web-free app, apps that access everything that you have available in crypto, right? So these are goals that are either reactive or proactive. So we have a lot of inputs into those discussions. And the, 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 what we can ask ourselves now is how do we have such a discussion in a decentralized environment? What is everything that we need to consider? 
Oops. So, uh, I'm going to refer to a few tweets that show highlight these current discussions that we're having. So maybe another suggestion will be instead of community finding out a, of a proposal when it is done, to actually have a pre-proposal phase where it can be discussed. So this tweet highlights several things, but I think the most important thing we see here is there is it's not clear to everyone how discussions are happening and how I can participate in a discussion. So we the first thing we need to consider is the discussion, because it is an open assembly, happens in different venues, in different places. So, for example, the Polkadot forum, Polk assembly and Subsquare, Subsocial, Twitter, Telegram, and Discord, and the very famous AAG, this uh, by the format that is happening two times a week on the Kusamarian, discussing all the current proposals, discussing the treasury, and giving everyone a space to discuss it. So, we are seeing this this places of discussion taking shape and also adapting to the needs of the whole ecosystem. And it makes it very hard for an individual to follow. So one question we can ask is, how can we make it easy for individuals to actually participate in the process? We have dark gov, which is sort of this umbrella term for all the informal networks of communication, of interaction that are happening off chain, essentially. So everything that happens off chain is the opposite of everything that happens on chain. If we call everything that happens on chain open gov, then a dark gov might be considered everything that happens off chain. Uh, people having discussions and so on. AHE, all these these off chain places, the forums and so on. Um, and uh, as a last point here, we have on chain signaling, which is a sort of form of voting. Everything that happens on chain that signals a certain intent. This might be a message. This might be aligning your vote with other parties. This might be signaling mechanisms. So we have all of these places enabling us to have a discussion. And now the, 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 there's a very age old question for every system that is bottom up, working in a bottom up way and working in a decentralized way. How can you can come from endless discussion to an actual decision? How can we make this possible? And we have seen proven templates of how this uh, is working. So, yeah, two more tweets. The growing need for native political organizations for a more organized, well-informed and active decision-making community. And do we need a founder involved in OpenGov, at least at this stage? So this is essentially what we're seeing here is a leadership question. How can we come to actual decisions? How can we come from a very broad space of a lot of optionality into reducing it down to a single decision that we can now follow? So this is the process that we're looking at. And we can already see that uh, some part of this is already happening in at least some verticals. So a few things that we need to consider is that we need to have some form of feedback cycles. We need to have some form of open communication that is ongoing and that can react to past communication. We need to have some form of bottom-up convergence. If a lot of people are participating and we, if we assume that a lot of people can have good and excellent ideas that are worth considering, then the question is how can we integrate those discussions in our process? And so um, I, I, I've been drawing this, con, con, this consensus funnel basically where we have like this bottom-up convergence of ideas being uh, aggregated into plans and then eventually maybe even aggregated into strategy so that we can arrive at a consensus. And sometimes when I talk about consensus, people think that I talk about everyone is agreeing on everything, but that's not the case. Consensus can also mean that people see that there is, so that there is just some form of agreement emerging out of the process. For example, in poker right now we see Giotto put in this initiative, the whale, this whale, you can see the video here, uh, this whale put in this initiative of saying, I want to support a lot of pro pro proposals. Our problem right now is that we're not having enough proposals. So let's throw a lot of money on proposals so that we just see a lot more proposals coming in. Now we see all of those proposals coming in. We see all of those ideas coming in. And so we're getting like, we're getting on a new level of having a new problem. And the new problem is we have so much input in the system. How can we properly process it? So we are starting to see this emergence of new layers of how can we judge these proposals and forming new entities uh, that are basically acting as intermediaries where they 
where like smaller proposal creators propose to this media intermediate entities and then get maybe funding for smaller projects. Um, and so what we see right now is that this is happening in one vertical. This is happening in outreach, outreach and media, which is only one vertical of governance that you can consider. And we have other verticals like developing software, running infrastructure, uh, doing research or data or uh, auditing and so on. So we can, we can see that processes are emerging and this is very chaotic. But uh, we just observe that this is happening and that the players that are making decisions is uh, Shadowgraph, is Giotto, is Ivy, is a chaos style, and they are in an interactive process and we are observing this and we are adapting our behavior. This is also consensus by action, by just adapting to what is happening and moving in an environment where we still try to optimize our impact on the system and the optionality and, and how we can have an impact with our ideas and with our capital, right? So there is no definitive answer, I would say. There is just a lot to observe. And I think it's interesting to observe what's happening right now in Polkadot in the, in the Autonomous Marketing Initiative and then see how we can adapt the process into other areas. And over time, we'll converge at a, at a shared process, I would say. So um, let's look at the actors here. And there is one thing that I want to say. So everyone is a voter who has tokens. Everyone is a voter. And then there are whales and delegates. And what we can see happening out of this behavior is that voters are sometimes feel disenfranchised in saying what matter, how does it matter how I vote if the whales and the delegates are making these decisions? So yes, we have to accept that there are plutocratic elements in Polkadot and in any on-chain governance system that is token holder governance. So maybe your individual vote might in some cases, many cases might not be the significant thing, but there are many things to consider. First of all, there's signaling. If a lot of people, uh, even like the small fish are voting in a certain direction, uh, whales are looking at this. And they are also one important factor that they consider in their decision making is what do a lot of people think or what a lot of stakeholders think. And they might also want to represent it. Um, and then the other thing is you're not only contributing with your vote, but you're also contributing with your ideas and your capacity to transform everything that's coming in and, and processing it. And so basically providing input by judging other things or even participating with your ideas and your discussion. And you can basically see this as a process where a lot of brains are participating in this process of creating this one big brain is one network brain. Um, yeah, and then we have voter committees, which is sort of a term that I'm introducing. I did not invent it. I borrowed it from MakerDAO. And so MakerDAO is having these communities of whales and delegates that hold a lot of power and they agree to coordinate and come together, form a platform because they share some political opinions. And so they want to get stuff done together. And if you have a political system going on for some time, you just know this person is usually of that opinion. And this person is usually of that opinion, let's say in ideological terms. And so you have these factions forming after some time. They don't have to be strict. They can still be voting differently on different decisions if they are of different opinion. But there is some overlap that is big enough that they say, okay, we coordinate and cooperate on certain issues, just exchanging knowledge, just exchanging ideas, hearing opinions. Um, so even participating in, in the formation of such voter committees, or uh, maybe if you're like good in synthesizing information, gathering information, this is also worthwhile. And I think it's a possibility that we might be arriving at such voter committees just because people are of the same opinion and they want to share resources because not everyone has infinite time. But if you have like the same ideas, uh, you might want to delegate your, not even decision-making power, but just the power to influence someone to influence your decision because you trust their judgment, right? So voter committees might be something that we see that resemble, have a resemblance to political parties, but are different, are of a new nature just because it is web free. And so these are the must haves, everything that we discussed right now, this is happening anyways. This is not something that we can control or like we can just influence the process, but this is going to happen in one form or another, right? This is developing and we're just part of this and observing this. 
Um, but now we come to the part that we parts that you can actually influence and that can make a big difference into how successful our ecosystem actually becomes. Because OpenGov is a process that's like a wild animal, a beast that you cannot control. But being smart is a process that you can control. And having strategy is the thing that gives us the biggest leverage in having an impact to make Polkadot an extremely successful ecosystem. So Hoon, for example, recently was saying, people talk about Polkadot treasury spending too much on marketing or not enough in dev, but how much did they spend on market research and business models or even problem statement? Is anyone in sync or are we backing this asynchronously? Okay, so abstracting this comment a little bit is and uh, how much are we actually asking about how the overall uh, system is working and what the actual problems are that we need to solve? Of course, everyone is thinking about this, but putting this into a deliberate strategy is a very uh, time consuming process that uh, requires a lot of dedication. So having a strategy would help us having shared direction, going into the same direction, having a holistic approach. So considering all the relevant factors that are relevant to achieve, like going into the direction as fast as possible. Um, we can orient it on ecosystem success, which is sort of the core metric of seeing, okay, if the organism is healthy, it can get a lot of stuff done. Um, and we are confronting the real world, so we are not fixing problems that no one actually need, needs solved, but we are actually having a conversation with actors outside of Polkadot, seeing what the problems are that are actually relevant and then fixing them. And we can be a learning organization, which means continuously updating ourselves, not solving the problems from two years ago, but the problems that are right in front of us. And also developing standards and how we can become better. This is our standards in how we judge things, how we take metrics, how we to take KPIs. Raising our standards is about the level of quality we want the ecosystem to achieve. And there is a lot to talk about strategy, but sort of, I think this is sort of like the, the top, if we can achieve that, we can, we have a really good sense and understanding that we're going in the right direction. And the second big important topic is if we have an actual solid understanding of what we're doing with our budget, are we leveraging the capital that Polkadot is having in an efficient way? So Brian Chan was arguing, maybe we should set a budget for treasury that it cannot spend more funds on, uh, for example, in marketing or in uh, technical projects. Um, we need to have things built before we can market them. So this is essentially, this is essentially expressing priorities. How much do we prioritize building stuff? How much do we prioritize uh, marketing stuff? So we see that there is a, a prioritization of all the stuff that we're doing and how we should allocate it in comparison to each other. The quote that was something uh, very similar where he just acknowledges there is a chaos in decentralized governance. Um, and we need a, a budgeting approach, just considering infrastructure, applications, marketing, and so on and so on and so on, events. So yeah, we need an approach just to make this better. Um, and then uh, maybe there is even a relevant uh, sub-treasuries that we can build. So I think when we look at the budget, what we right now have is a reactive budgeting. Proposals come in, money goes out. And we have not a full concept of how we're actually dealing with that money. But what we actually want to have is a proactive budgeting approach, which means that we want to have an analysis of past behavior. We want to, for example, like the pie chart you see, how much did we spend in each dimension? Did we want to spend that amount or do we want to spend different amounts? Are we on the right track? So that means introducing spending categories and uh, doing like the boring stuff of working through spreadsheets and, and doing analysis of past proposals and see what, what delivered and so on, uh, and then going forward. Uh, coming to proactive agreements of how much we want to spend on the different categories, uh, and then maybe allocating that money for sub-treasuries so that we have a holistic approach like we have in our strategy. We have maybe some agreements between the big actors and how much each category is worth or at least coming to a mechanism on how to determine it. And yeah, th these are the categories of how we, how we come to a decision. And now I guess the shorter part of the remaining video is uh, how do we do it? How do we actually execute on that? 
And so what we can see here is uh, we have made decisions. Now the question is, how do we put this agenda that we developed into, an, into action? And so what we need for that is an organization that is able to perform. So this is what might be the departments in traditional politics. And I want to say you don't need a department or a collective for everything, but there are certain areas where we have a continuous amount of work to get done that it might be very meaningful to have collectives. For example, technical fellowship, which develops Polka.core. At the same time, we want to stay flexible and we want to stay effective. So this is where bounties and initiatives come into play. And we need accountability. So we need to have audits and we need to have reviews of all the stuff that we're doing so that we know that the stuff gets actually done, that we're what amount of money we're spending, if everything is done properly uh, and so on. And so one thing that is fairly new, and I think some more people need to know about this, is collectives. What is it? It's a group of people with a budget and or a payroll that have an agenda. So basically the technical fellowship is a team that gets the poker.core done and they are paying members of the technical fellowship to be part of the fellowship and actually do that work. And right now we only have this technical fellowship, but what you can already see is that maybe like some form of marketing fellowship might be emerging. Maybe business development units are emerging that are actually trying to attract like new business uh, partners for the future, uh, events, data. So a lot of things are, are possible and imaginable. Um, what we can acknowledge here is that these are long time horizon things. These are groups that take time to form. And this is sort of the conservative approach where we just know we want to create stability. As a partner to that, we have bounties, which are already existing. So this is money allocated for a specific person, purpose, and it's flexible. And so you basically can have it on demand. So right now, I think we have 30 different bounties and they are for specific categories and they have curators. So there's a people that are judging. Uh, so this is basically a bounty saying we want to get, I don't know, anti-scam bounty. We want the anti-scam anti bounty done. And so curators are looking and if so someone is doing a specific activity that is within the scope of the bounty, they, they report it and then the curators will charge it. And if it is within the scope, they will get a payment. So it's basically retroactive funding that is announced before the fact. For example, the anti-scam bounty. So this last thing, and I think this is something that we're missing. And I think it would have a great impact, uh, but it requires work, is governance initiatives. So this basically starts with a problem statement like developer experience is not the best in poker right now. Um, for example, they miss relevant documentation and so on. And then from this, we are formulating a specific goal that we want to achieve, improve the developer experience. Okay, now we have a specific goal. And what we can see is that there is already stuff happening all over the ecosystem that is working towards that goal, that it already wants to implement that. So we can group those related activities. This is like bounties, this is proposals, this is collectives actually working on these things, all the projects that are there. And we are creating a shared view. So what it allows us to do is see how we're actually making progress on a specific key area, like developer experience which is very essential to attracting more developers to the ecosystem. And in this way, it acts as a coordination mechanism that allows us to coordinate all those activities just because we see everything that is happening in this area. And what I think is important in this regard is that it is a multidisciplinary approach. So for example, developer experience requires documentation, libraries, working with teams, asking questions and so on. So many different people are needed for that. And with that, we're actually coming to the end of this video. So in conclusion, we have this legislative ap approach, which is how handle, do we handle discussions? How do we come to decisions? And then when we have those decisions, do we give them to collectives or do we need an initiative to solve it? And this, I think, of growing importance topic of how do we handle a budget in the future? So I think these are the discussions that we should be having. Um, I hope this video is useful for you. If it is, uh, make sure to share it with your friends and tell them to follow Adidas and Bob on Twitter and YouTube. And with that, I wish you a good day and see you next time.